let us solve this one using round robin. So, first of all, um, let us maintain the Q and the Gantt chart. So, the Q contains what is the first process that has arrived? Or if you look at the arrival times, the first process has arrived at 1 and that is P4. Therefore, P4 will be initially in the Q, right? And the Gantt chart, even though you are going to start with 0, we have to be idle till 1. The reason is no process is available till 1. And now at point, you know, at the time period 1, I am going to choose the only available process which is P4 from the queue and schedule it, P4, right? And how long is it going to execute? If you watch it, it is going to execute for one time quantum which is 3 units. Therefore, 1 plus 3 is 4. So, it can execute till 4. Now, P4 has executed for 3 units. Therefore, remaining time is 6, isn't it? And now, by this time 4, add all the processes which are arrived, right? So, by this time 4, what are the other processes which have arrived? At time 2, P5 has arrived. And at time 3, P3 has arrived. And at time hmm, 4, P2 has arrived, right? Therefore, in these 3 units of time, 3 more new processes got added. Always remember that after executing a, executing a process for time quantum and uh, you know it is before doing anything else you try to add first the process which have arrived during that uh, time and then you try to put that process back therefore put the process p4 back right and now what is remaining p5 p3 this one right so what is the next process that has to be scheduled according to the queue p5 if i schedule p5 how long should i run it just check p5 P5 needs only 2 units of time, but I have a you know facility to run for 3 units, but anyway I am going to run it for only 2 because it needs only 2. Therefore, once I run it, it is going to execute to completion. Now the time is 6, right? Therefore, by the time 6, see what are the process which have arrived. So, P1 has arrived at time equal to 5 and P6 has arrived at time equal to 6. Therefore, all the processes have arrived. See this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All the processes have arrived by now. And now, should I add P5 back to the queue? No need because P5 has already run to its completion. So, no need to add P5 to the queue. And next one that has to be scheduled is P3. Now, just see the um, time for P3. So, bus time for P3 is 7, isn't it? But then you are not going to run P3, uh, I mean, till for 7 units, you are going to run it only for 3 units, which means till 9 I am going to run it. So, it is going to remain as 4. And now by the time 9, everything has arrived, so you need not worry about a new process. And here you can stop worrying about the new process. And you should decide only whether the present process has to be added back to the queue or not. Should it be added? Yes, because P3 needs even more time. How much? 4 units. Therefore, add it back. P3 is going to be back here. Right? And now, after this, the next one is P2. So, I am going to take P2. And how much time does P2 require? 6 units, therefore I run it for 3 units because I have only that much amount of time, quantum time, therefore it is going to be 3 now, right? Hmm. And now, should I add P2 back to the queue? Yes, because P2 needs uh, need to be executed for the 3 units, therefore add P2 back to the queue. And what is next one? P4. I am going to schedule P4, right? And how long are you going to execute P4? So if you watch P4, it requires 6 units of time, therefore I am going to execute it for 3 units. So it is 15, right? And it even needs uh, 3 more units further, therefore I should again put, it, put P4 back, right? And next one that has to be scheduled is P1, therefore P1 is chosen. And how much time does P1 need? P1 needs 5 units, but I can execute only for 3 units. I am going to execute it and therefore it requires 2 units of time further so I am going to add it at the end of the queue so that later at some point we can take it and schedule it and next one is P6 therefore P6 is going to be scheduled here right so how look at the need of P6 it ex exactly needs 3 units so I am going to run it for 3 units so it will run till completion which means till 21 it will run till completion and after that you don't need to add P6 back because it is not required isn't it it, it got completed and next one is P3. Now I am going to take P3 out. If I take P3, it, it requires 4 more units, but then I can run only for 3 more units. Therefore, running time, remaining time will be 1. So if I run till 24, it has to be run for 1 more unit. Therefore, I am going to add it back to the queue. And next one which is going to be executed is P2. Fine. And now if you look at P2, 
P2 requires P2 need to be run for only 3 units. So run it for 3 units, it will run till completion, which means by 27 it is going to be completed and you need not add it back. Okay, P2 need not be added back. And next one is P4. Right, so P4 will be scheduled here. And what is the hmm, P4 is here? And what is the requirement? Only 3 units. Therefore, it can run till completion if I run it till 30. So, P4 need not be added back. Next one is P1. P1 will be scheduled and P1 need to be executed for only 2 units. Therefore, you can execute it for till 32 and it will become 0. Once it becomes 0, you can you know, actually need not add it back. So, P1 need not be added back. Next one is P3. P3 is scheduled and if you watch P3, it needs only 1 unit of time. Run it. It will run till completion. 33, you need not add it back. Got it? So this is how this entire procedure is and now let's see completion time and uh, no, turnaround time and waiting time all these times. So first one is let's talk about the completion time at what time they got completed. Completion time. Right. So come from the ending P1 got completed at 32 therefore completion time of P1 is 32. And then P2 got completed at uh, 27, so completion time is 27. And P3 got completed at 33. And P4 got completed at 30. And P5 got completed at uh, 6. Right. And P6 got completed at 21. And after that, you can find out turnaround time. Turnaround time is difference between completion time and arrival time. So what is it 27, what is it 23, what is this 30, 29, 4, what is it um, 6, 15, right? And now after finding out turnaround time, you can find out the waiting time. So what is the waiting time? Turnaround time minus burst time. So how much is this? 22, hmm, 17, hmm, 23, hmm, 20, 2 and then 12 right and that is how you can find out the waiting time so this is the turnaround time and this is the waiting time you can find out average of these two dividing it with 6 add them and divide it with 6 now let's see response time response time is nothing but um, once after the process gets you know gets arrived once the process becomes available which means if it is arriving then after how much time did you schedule it for the first time that is the response time or a process is going to respond to you once you schedule it therefore the first response is nothing but the response time that depends on when you have actually uh, processed it I mean that depends on when you have actually scheduled it right for the first time now see this how can I find out the uh, this response time is now check this one uh, for each one when did p1 get got scheduled for the first time at the time 15 when did it arrive it arrived at 5 therefore 15 minus 5 is 10 so that is the response time for p1 and what about p2 when did p2 got scheduled for the first time so now you are you are supposed to come from the right whenever you want to see the you know uh, first time you, should, you are supposed to come from the left hand side whenever you want to see the completion time you are supposed to come from the right hand side now look at p2 now you, you got P2 for the first time at 9, isn't it? So at 9 it got for the first time, uh, it got scheduled for the first time, but when did it arrive? It arrived at 4, therefore 9 minus 4 is 5. That is the response time for P2. And what about the response time for P3? Hmm, if you watch the response time for P3, it got scheduled as 6, but it arrived at uh, 3. Therefore its response time is 3. And what about P4? It got scheduled at 1, but it arrived at 1. Therefore, response time is 0, which means it responded immediately, right? And then, what about uh, P5? It got scheduled at 4, but it arrived at 2. Therefore, its response time is 2. And what about P6? It got scheduled for the first time at 18, but it arrived at 6. Therefore, its response time is 12, right? And now you can find out the average response time. What do you think will be the effect of quantum time on response time? The process will have to wait for a long time. 
if it you know for the response or a process will be scheduled after a long time in case if the time quantum is higher and in case if the time quantum is lower the process will get scheduled immediately i mean as early as possible right so what i could say is um, as the time quantum as it increases one is context switching increases and second is response time increases which means it will take lot of time for the process to respond right oh if the time quantum increases context switching actually decreases because we need not do lot of context switches and as the time quantum decreases context switching they increases but the response time will decrease right therefore higher time quantum is better in terms of for context switching and lower time quantums are better in terms of this uh, this uh, you know response time so depending on your need you are going to choose it if you want all your process to be very very interactive then go with the lower process you no know, this response time and one interesting thing is what happens if time quantum is infinity which means if i allow any process that has been picked up to run till its completion the time quantum is infinity means a process can run forever but then it cannot run forever it will run only for its burst time so how does it behave now once you pick a process for scheduling uh, once you schedule it it will run it run till its completion now how are you going to pick each process depending on the arrival time right therefore whenever time quantum becomes infinity this uh, round robin will slowly become uh, this uh, first come first served as you keep on increasing the time quantum round robin will slowly approach the first come first served and whenever the time quantum is sufficiently large then round robin will become first come first served completely got it